Here, uh, under the title, I've written Trendsetter in Practical Education, and hopefully by the end of presentation, you understand what, what the meaning uh, of this particular phrase. So, first of all, uh, let's try to understand where we are. We are in Poznan. Uh, Poznan is quite a beautiful and comfortable city for students from all over the world, because it's uh, the fifth largest city in Poland. Uh, so if you check uh, Wikipedia even, uh, you will find this information. Moreover, uh, the great point is that this is the city with the lowest unemployment level in Poland. So your uh, students will definitely find uh, some job and employment here because quite a lot of international companies um, uh, have their um, houses uh, in Poznan. Uh, it's also good because uh, the well-developed uh, transport system helps students to travel from far away countries, from remote countries. We have our own airport, railway stations, and so on. Uh, this city uh, is, is uh, quite... Um, quite friendly because of the uh, ecological uh, points of view. There are plenty of parks, squares, and so on. But this is just uh, irregular information. Important fact is that your students feel home because it's the city of universities. More than uh, 26 universities are in Poznan. And here, for your better understanding, you see the map. And uh, Poznan is just in the middle between Berlin and Warsaw. So it takes only three hours from Berlin and three hours from Warsaw. Your students can also travel easily to Baltic Sea or some mountains. And finally, coming to the point, Collegium da Vinci, what the university is. The Collegium da Vinci is a university that was uh, founded in 1996. And in our region, um, Greater Poland, Voivodeship, uh, it, uh, it was founded one of the first. So we've got quite a great experience in this sphere. I mean, first of the uh, uh, of the private universities, ju just uh, to, to make it clear. Yeah? Uh, our university is focused on gaining practical skills. That's why there are lots of partnerships signed between our universities and local regional um, popular companies. Uh, the, with the help of uh, such agreements and with the help of such partners, uh, more than 70% of our classes have practical dimension. And this later influence on the uh, fast uh, workplaces for our university uh, uh, gradu um, uh, graduates, uh, because due to Ministry of Education statistics, our graduates find work within one month. So what's a unique about Collegium Da Vinci. We have our own uh, teaching model. We follow uh, practices of Western universities. Uh, we have um, tutors. These uh, are people who help to develop our students. And uh, we have career office, uh, of course, that is quite useful and practical for our students. Here you can see the numbers. Our university is not that huge. It's quite a cozy one um, because uh, in total there are almost 3,000 students uh, uh, right now yeah, uh, that, that uh, study at the university. But at the same time, uh, th this gives to have a friendly atmosphere. And you see the number of international students. Perhaps at this moment you've got a question. So what countries do these students come from? And of course, the most important, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, ge general, generally, our students come from the clo closest country to Poland, such as Ukraine or Belarus. But uh, since like last three years, uh, we develop our English uh, language um, programs. That's why more and more students from Turkey, from Azerbaijan, from uh, Kyrgyzstan, from Zimbabwe, from Kenya uh, come to our university. Mm, and uh, right now, uh, since we have conversation with you, uh, you see that we try to develop in this sphere. Okay, so just a couple of pictures, because uh, as Nick have asked me in the beginning, it's not a good idea to show you the video of our university, but you can easily find that video and 
uh, have an online tour so you can see that it's well developed um, with great facilities there is a gym uh, for our students with squash and with uh, different uh, halls uh, for to participate uh, uh, there there is a great library hall there are quite cozy and uh, well furnished uh, halls for our uh, last uh, classes uh, that's why it would be quite a great uh, thing if you really check this video. Or maybe I, I have a chance at least to demonstrate you some part of that. So uh, several minutes ago, uh, when I have started, I told you about the unique model of education. What does it mean? Uh, first of all, we practice on we focus on practicality. This is uh, quite obvious, uh, and I have spoken about that. Individualization, uh, that means that uh, the students can choose their own study path, and they choose from the list of modules that are well prepared by our lectures. And uh, that we try to focus um, the, on the uh, competences of the future. So our students have classes with tutors and our classes are built in such a way that they develop creativity, complex problem solving, all these traits that are very important on the employment market. So we check it regularly and add some uh, specific uh, traits so our students can be well prepared for the uh, market, job market. And about partners, yeah, I say uh, I, have, I have told you about regional partners, uh, what they help us to do is of course they, um, uh, they share their, uh, their experience. So uh, in the end we have high demand occupations so they help us to create our courses. They give to our students some up-to-date knowledge and skills. They they also lead their classes. So in case in, in uh, case of case studies, yeah. So first of all, our students know the situation and then they know the theory. They also uh, have quite a lot of conferences and workshops in the um, university, and uh, for the future. They, gives our, they give our students business contacts for internship and for employment. And finally, uh, we, we can talk about faculty. So what we actually offer to our students. As you see, uh, the range for Polish uh, language courses is higher, is bigger, obviously. Uh, and uh, there are quite a lot of interesting courses. Uh, they are not like just common ones, but I suppose that most of you are interested in courses in English. So here we can talk about information technology and management. Both of those courses, uh, courses are undergraduate degree, and uh, I'll tell you about uh, both of them in just a second. So let's come to the point and uh, here is information technology bachelor of engineering that lasts for three and a half years and as you see uh, and as I have told you your students may choose whether they want to know more about web and mobile applications or computer networks or computer games. In all of the cases, they just get up-to-date knowledge and they learn the latest solution. It's never like that, that your students have some lecturer who stay in front of the hall and try to persuade them to, to remember such information. They sit, uh, at the computer from the first semester and they start doing their thing. That's why uh, this university is practical. And you will never find something that is extra and unnecessary for that. You'll never have to be focused on learning some uh, some old uh, programs that are not popular right now. So no waste of time. And uh, our... Um, Graduates uh, can become programmers, administrators, uh, developers, and uh, this uh, this is the course that successfully operates uh, in the Polish program and uh, for uh, several years it exists uh, in uh, English language. 
that's why we can say that uh, you can uh, you can uh, send, send your students and they will be satisfied because these groups are really international. For example, previous year we brought students from uh, several uh, uh, like from many many countries uh, and that's why when they finally came uh, they could share uh, their cultural differences and see how it works it's not like uh, your students come and the group is full um, I don't know from people from Poland or Ukraine wherever they are international and management this is the second course uh, bachelor or bachelor's degree uh, that is compared to information technology lasts only three years and this management is beyond the classic terms because uh, it's uh, the mixture of uh, knowledge um, you can find some something from marketing something from psychology because to influence people you have to know even that of course just uh, general market uh, general management skills so this is the course that um has a lot of common with design thinking, team oriented uh, ori uh, oriented to work, crea uh, creative problem solving, and everything that is quite important for um, for today's managers. And here, uh, students may choose their specialization paths. For example, creative marketing or innovation project management, and. This program is new for our English language course, but it's very popular for Polish ones. That's why we can say that we have checked it already and we know that it works really well. Um, on the bottom, you can see the workplaces, but in, in the case of manager, it's quite obvious. Uh, here, I just wanted to say you that sending your students to Collegium Da Vinci, uh, they are not alone. We try to prepare informative meetings for them, integration parties. They can also participate, and they uh, they really uh, they are really glad to participate in Erasmus Plus. They also take the chance and go to career office for job fairs. Uh, they may join any students club at the university and uh, it's also um, comfortable for them because they have their um, faculty coordinators. For example, the faculty of IT in English has uh, the coordinator, one person at the dinner, so they know this miss, they can also come to her uh, always and ask for any help. And in the very beginning, I told you that uh, we are a practical university and it's not only our own uh, statement because it was um, confirmed. Uh, education with the future um, uh, has um, given such awards for our courses like ma management. And the, they told that management um, has the highest standards in the field of future uh, higher education. and. Uh, this was the award for implementation of unique and new solutions in the field of technology. That's why we uh, most of our attention we put on such uh, creativity in the field of um, course development. If the course is not popular, it doesn't have sense on the employment market, we change it, we create something new, we always um, have some uh, consultations, we check our students for opinion, we ask Ask them, and that's why uh, we never stop at the same uh, position. Uh, so uh, I, I have generally uh, described you uh, the programs we offer, and now let's move to some important information. Where can your students sleep? And here we have a very comfortable option because just in front of us there is a building, Polonia Student Deport. Uh, so it takes maybe seven minutes uh, on foot. Uh, that's why uh, you, uh, students may easily use that. And of course, you understand that some 
uh, bus expenses uh, are not uh, are not for this case. That's why, uh, even though the uh, the apartments are not that cheap, but at the same time they save up money due to the comfortable location. By the way, Collegium Da Vinci uh, like is located in the central part of the city, so everything is closed. Shop is closed. The old town is closed, and uh, when Poland student deport is just in front of us, this is also an advantage. Um, according to our experience, uh, it, probably you are interested in the monthly budget, and here I have prepared some minimum for you. Just remember that is the minimum because uh, people may spend more and more. This is all up to the needs. Yeah, tuition fees, dormitory, then food expenses, just a very, very minimum that we heard from our students, mobile internet, and you can easily calculate uh, what students may earn when they work because uh, probably you know already that when there are students that are under 26 years old they don't pay taxes that's why this is just an interesting information for you and uh, let's move to the nutshell and here we talk about cooperation so uh, we are really interested in cooperation because we really want to develop our international path for students uh, and we see that students are satisfied. That's why. Um, that's why we right now we, uh, we we try to to gather more and more uh, partners. So um, first of all, when we sp uh, speak about uh, cooperation, it's always better to uh, set up individual meeting for discussion. But you can, of course, count for uh, ten percent of our year commission for each student. Uh, you can also understand that uh, we uh, we don't uh, offer you like the minimum for the first year and later on we see um, there is minimum that I've told you, but you can also uh, uh, try to, to get more if we discuss about more students or if we see that the potential of our cooperation is really high. Um, we also uh, are grateful for uh, for our best partners, I mean, those ones who give us students. Uh, so we uh, have created programs for seven plus or 10 plus. That means that uh, you as our partner is value is uh, quite valuable for us. And we, uh, we invite you to see the university to have some time with us uh, to know more about Poznan and so on. Uh, and tuition fee refund in case of visa refusal. This is always uh, what I um, asked about. And yes, uh, we also uh, know uh, the situation with visas, and we are um, we are on the side of the students here. So uh, until the fifth of November, if there is a visa refusal, it's not like someone have decided not to be uh, a student, but visa refusal we give the refund of money to the student. And uh, at this moment, uh, I have tried to, to be quite short uh, and uh, the information that you definitely need that you can always find us and you can always uh, contact us. There is Telegram, WhatsApp, there is uh, Instagram, YouTube. So you can watch several videos about us, about Poznan about university, about our, uh, about our lectures, uh, and to find out if you find this uh, option useful for you and worthy to cooperate. Thank you so much for your attention. And uh, I just asked Nick if I can click on the video. So maybe some can look at the pictures while answering. Is it possible? I mean, the video about you. Uh, I, would, I would strongly suggest, thank you for the presentation. First of all, don't stop sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think we're going to need to go back to the information that you had in the presentation. About the video, I think it would be better if you will copy paste it to the chat, the link, if you have it. Maybe you have a YouTube or etc. Uh, why we don't recommend to use videos in the Zoom? Uh, depending on the internet of the attendees, it may not be, I would say, the best experience in terms also of audio. So if you will have a link to it and you can paste it into the chat and choose to everyone, I think it will be, it will be the best option.
So then I'll do that in the end of presentation mm -hmm. because I All have right. link for Gmail. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Okay, so let's go for the questions because we're just starting to receive them. And dear agents, please use Q&A, not the chat. Questions in the chat will not be answered. All right, so let's start with the first one. Uh, how many intakes do you have per 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 academic year? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we have only one intake, October intake, and we start our admission in the early um, February. Uh, so you can uh, already register your student. At the same time, the academic year starts in October. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, let's go for the next one. Are there any chances for any new programs in English in the future? Yes, there are, of course, because we always ask uh, the students, the partners, uh, if we either if they really need some other program. We also uh, stop uh, some programs if we see that they are not popular at all. So uh, it's always possible. Of course, when we speak about those one that already exist in Polish. Uh, they, this is quite easy, uh, but if we're uh, talking about something that never existed before, then I can just share this information without our uh, dean office, without our lex uh, 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 lecturers, and see if they are interested in such a creation. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, let's go with the next one. Um, uh, please show us the fee details uh and settle down opportunity in europe because as i remember you mentioned very clearly that poznan is the city with the lowest unemployment rate mm -hmm. so, so basically and as miss julia mentioned you will have around one month after graduating to find a job because usually this is like the this is the time that is needed in the city to find a job so in my opinion if it takes up to one month to find a job after the graduation, uh, a settle down process will be very simple. You just apply for the resident permit and that's it. Yeah, here we are talking about uh, courses that are so popular that the majority of our students work at the same time. And our programs that, uh, that are created in such a way that students study three, sometimes four times per week, I mean, we try to gather the classes in such a good way. So we understand that students have one more or sometimes two more working days uh, to, to work at the same time, work and study. Yeah, that, that's why uh, the situation with one, one month, uh, just, just the confirmation of it. Uh, and you understand that information technology specialists are needed everywhere, uh, as well as management is quite popular. Uh, and here is the uh, tuition fee structure, uh, 3,240 euro per year. And of course, we let our students pay in installments, in semesters, and even uh, in month on the monthly basis, but uh, we, we, we highly recommend them not to try because of the visa rejection. So uh, semester payment is also possible if you ask about that. All right, thank you. Let's go for the next one. Uh, for the admission process, is there any interview criteria or any online test? Okay. I would say that at this moment uh, we uh, we try to um, to, to uh, help our students in such a way if they don't have English language proficiency certificate, then we uh, can offer them interview. But it's only uh, about English language skills. Yeah, there is a Zoom interview where they can communicate with ling uh, ling Lingua School and when, uh, where they write the test online, and that's it. But if you're talking about some course interviews, like for in IT or management, no, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And the second part of this question, um, for Indian students, uh, tuition fee student will in advance? Uh -huh, okay, so are you paying uh, fees before or after uh, receiving the visa? 
in, in our experience, uh, it, it works like the best option is to be accepted, to understand that you're accepted because you get confirmation. You pay for your studies, uh, students pay, and then we share the documents confirming that the student is accepted and he ha or she has paid for the studies. In other way, uh, we don't know if, if it works at all. As I say, it's according to our experience. So uh, we ask our students to pay and we share with them the refund policy in case of with a uh, rejection. All right, thank you. The next question, can we send students at this time still? And what is the deadline for the admission? Uh, I'm afraid that at this time, <laughs> there are quite a few places left. That's why, uh, of course, we are very interested in cooperation, but uh, we have to contact each other and make sure that there are several places at least. So when you start this registration procedure collection, the documents and so on, there is a chance to be accepted. Uh, as I know, a couple of days ago, there were several places, but just a few for information technology maybe three, maybe four, so it can be quite risky. We have two groups, by the way, for information technology in English uh, and one group for management. So uh, you would better contact me, please. Uh, you know the details for my, um, uh, of my address and I tell you uh, sh for sure if it is chance or we better start from the next semester, from the next year. Thank you. All right. So uh, don't forget, you have the contacts of Miss Yulia on the screen. So use them as soon as possible to get in touch. Uh, the next, um, the next question is: uh, Are you taking transfer students? Uh, if you are, uh, I just don't quite understand the question. Are you taking transfer students? If you are, what is the cut of year? Do you do do you take students from Ukraine? Okay, um, have I understand this question? So basically, when you do a transfer, uh, dear agent, the university is doing the evaluation of the programs, because each university, for example, even if you have two institutions and they have same program like management and management, that doesn't mean that they are basically the same in terms of the subjects. So if you would like to transfer to the Da Vinci, uh, to the Collegium Da Vinci, they will need to do the evaluation and check if there is any kind of subject difference. So, so yeah, so this is not a process that is done like in one day. So first of all, you will need to send the transcript to them and then they will be checking if there is a, if there is a possibility. Exactly. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, I transfer such cases for our deanery. They exactly, they check. And in most cases, the program is so different. There is no option like to, to, to make this process. And uh, then uh, I know that there were um, such cases for sure from different universities, but uh, just a few of them that I really uh, heard about. That's why it's possible, but this procedure is very hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the next one, do you accept English uh, language uh, certificates like Duolingo, MOE or others? What would be the score? And I would just add from myself one additional question, uh, question Miss Julia. Can you please specify do countries that have English language as official? Let's go for the African countries like Nigeria, Zimbabwe, because they have English as, as the native language. Do they also need to provide you with English language certificate? If uh, they have, uh, uh, this is the country with the official English language. And if the certificate was issued, I mean, high school certificate in English, and it's obvious that the course was totally in English, then we can skip the interview and accept students on the basis of such documents. Mm -hmm. And what about those uh, other kind of certificates like Duolingo and, and others? Do, do you accept those? 
I have the list of such certificates that are accepted by us in our regulations, but I have no idea if Dolingo is there. We have such popular ones as uh, Toyful Isles, uh, Cambridge, um, and a, a couple of other certificates, but I'm not sure if Dolingo is there. So if there is such certificate that is not recognized by us, um, uh, like automatically, then we uh, provide the students with a term of uh, free of course, uh, online interview. But we, we have to check if Dolingo is there. I just don't remember. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, the next one. Um... Uh, how long are the students allowed to stay after their studies? Is there anything like post-graduation work permit? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, the students have to collect the documents, go to the voivodeship uh, office and apply for that. They, it, it's not only about diploma. They also have to confirm their stay and their ba uh, their financial basis, but yes, it is possible. And our students, in most cases, they work already. That's why they don't apply for such a permit on the basis of diploma only, but they uh, they apply for their um, work residence um, and permission. Uh, but yes, it's possible. Uh, Poland gives such option for students. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm, do you send offer letters after the application was filled? What we say, what we have in our uh, admission uh, procedure, there is uh, a pre-acceptance letter. Uh, sometimes students just need them or agents need them for such a confirmation. This pre-acceptance letter doesn't have any visa purposes and it states clearly. This only says that registration was completed and some part of the document was sent. Yeah? And uh, after the full pack of document is sent to us, uh, it is verified. We can issue the uh, acceptance letter or together with other documents demanding for visa purposes. Mm -hmm. Demanded. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's go with the next one. How can we submit the application? Do you have any specific platform for it? And uh, shall we wait to sign an agreement first? Okay, uh, so uh, I say that... Uh, we are very honest in this uh, sphere. Sometimes uh, agents first of all send us the candidates and then they say, okay, so you have such some provision. Uh, you will say, of course we do. Then we sign a contract and of course we calculate the provision for the applicants that are sent even before the agreement. So such situations happened and it's all, all, always possible. But uh, the best option for both of us, first of all, to determine the uh, uh, the uh, provision to to determine the uh, conditions of our partnership, to sign an agreement, and later on uh, we share all the details of admission, like step by step. Step one is to register here, and you have links. Step two is send out the documents to this email during the seven days. These documents include blah 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 blah. So you have uh, the details structure of admission sent by us to you and as i say it's better first of all to be to sign the agreement but if it's impossible then uh, in any case you get uh, your benefit for that thank you um the next one uh, shall we get in touch to sign an agreement and and how the signing is done okay uh, first of all we uh arrange the meeting, online meeting. So you can contact me and ask that you're interested in such a one. Uh, then we communicate, talk about deta details. I say how uh, I uh, would love to, you to promote us, some, send in some materials. Maybe you tell about your needs so we can decide if it is possible to, to follow them. Uh, and uh, later uh, after that meeting, I, I sent you the draft of the agreement so you can read it all and uh, sign it, send it to us in scan. Uh, if you're from a remote country, uh, then we signed it from our side and sent it to you. So since that time, we are official partners. Thank you. Um, are there 
Are there any specific criteria for different nationalities that varies from the normal application criteria? generally the same. The only criteria that is different is that local Polish students and students who are already there, we can uh, skip the part of uh, tuition fee payment because we know that they don't need it for visa. But those ones who need that for visa, we ask to pay tuition fees in advance and get the confirmation for that. But the rest of the documentation part, uh, the rest of the um, requirements of uh, uh, the these uh, certificates are the same even for students from, Pol Pol from Poland, because if student completed their course somewhere, um, the, uh, some country that is not uh, the part of our convention that don't have apostille but legalization, we ask our students from Poland to, to complete this legalization. So it's, it's almost, it's just the same in spite of uh, tuition fees for visa purposes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the next one, uh, there are difficulties in visa appointment dates for West African countries. Uh, is there any chance that university is assisting their students uh, with the visa? I will tell you the truth. At this moment, uh, we don't have like direct contact somewhere. We can only uh, add some extra uh, letters from the deanery, from the rector, like asking for the date. And it doesn't work in all cases, of course, we, we, we know the situation. Uh, but if such help from our side would help you somehow, then of course we are open. But we cannot find the dates for appointment for our candidates. We would love to, but that's why we need some partners uh, who, who, who help the students in this case. Thank you. I will just add for myself, as I was working in the university, dear agents, universities don't have any kind of influence, not even small on the embassy because there is a data protection law and embassy are just not giving the information to the institutions none of it so basically each visa process is a private process so that is why embassy will not even respond to any kind of messages and etc uh Several right. years ago, we tried to call the, uh, I don't know, maybe it was five years ago, and at this time, uh, at that at time, we got replies like, thank you, and so on. Sometimes there was no reply, sometimes there was thank you, and later on, there was just out responder, responder that uh, your message uh, ca cannot, uh, cannot be answered because it doesn't cover the topics that are possible. Yeah, and we have no option even to send the data uh, because it's, uh, it's the law in, in Poland. Yes. All right. The next one is, uh, do you have any kind of admission fee? Uh, there is admission fee, but in most cases, uh, foreign students don't have to pay that because uh, even right now, by the end of uh, September, by the end of September, uh, students don't have to pay registration fee. That is twenty euro, and uh, in, uh, international students, yes, uh, in most cases uh, they are already accepted by that time because it's impossible for them to accept, to be accepted later. It, it's always like this. We have discount by the end of July or middle of July, then we prolong it. So in total, students don't have to pay. It's just the ring of bell that please, please be admitted early, as early as you can. But um, as the experience shows, the students are accepted earlier and they don't pay this 20 euro official officially stated uh, registration fee. This is how we call, so no other fees. Thank you. Uh, the next one, do you have any kind of scholarships? Uh, okay, if you ask about applicant scholarship, scholarship for applicants, then no. If you ask about some talented students with high results for the first year of studies, then of course, yes, we have rector scholarship that is available for both uh, Polish students and international ones. And our international one get this scholarship. So this was my answer. Thank you. Uh, the next one, 
do you have any kind of contact form to you? Form, you can easily contact me by email or you send me uh, SMS or uh, some chat with me on WhatsApp. And right now, uh, at this moment, it's better to use this number. Yeah, but our um, oh, oops, 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 Brown, but our um, office numbers are both of them. Yeah, so I really recommend you to use this uh, number that is the first one for the easiest and the fastest contact with me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the next one, um, can you please state the whole list of documents that is required to get an admission? Oh, okay. Depending if the student comes from the country that needs a hostility or legalization, this is the first difference and the most important one. Depending if the student is uh, less uh, younger than 18 years old or older. But in most cases, there is online registration, then the documents that the system generates, uh, they are to be signed by students. This include personal questionnaire, application form, agreement, attachment to agreement, and student oath. So the applicant has to sign these documents on all the pages stating like he read all of them. So in the end of the page, then uh, he has to sign the document power of attorney so we can uh, later share information about all the process and uh, documents with you. Uh, then uh, if by that time of registration student already has a high school certificate, then send it to us. If uh, the student already has apostille or the first uh, step of legalization, it's good because we can already accept the student on the basis of these documents. Uh, if not, we can wait for that. Uh, there is also in most cases we ask for a kind of eligibility letter stated by at least the head of the school confirming the fact that this student is eligible for admission. So in the uh, terms of uh, 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 country requirements, this certificate that the student possesses uh, lets uh, him or her to be enrolled to the university. Uh, and this uh, document this is only in case of legal legalization. If the country doesn't have um, a postilla for uh, such certificates, uh, and uh, of course we ask for language certificate or uh, language confirmation uh, or test, for example. So, depending on the situation. That means, uh, let's sum up, uh, documents uh, from the online platform signed by students, document for the um, uh, power of, a toy, of, of attorney because you represent a student from the student or parents if the student is minor, uh, then the school uh, certificate uh, that has to be with apostille stamp or legalization stamp, and in some cases, we also ask about eligibility data for later recognition process and language confirmation. Mm -hmm. Just Thank you. In general. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question is, it's still about the postgraduate work permit. Uh, how long is it valid, if you know? Here, from the side of uh, our voivodeship, I, I, I really uh, don't want to, to make any mistake in this part. I know that students apply, apply for that and they get it uh, on the basis of our diploma, because we are on the list of accepted universities that uh, are accepted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, so, um, but how long uh, the decision uh, will be, for how long, uh, I cannot tell you the mistake here. Uh, from from what I remember, I think the maximum amount of time is like one year to to find a job. Perhaps, perhaps. Okay. Yes. I, I haven't heard that it is longer or shorter, and I have never checked it, like, if it can be shorter or longer, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, the next one is, apart from the bank transfer fees for the payment, uh, by which kind of transfer the applicants can pay? Do you accept Flywire? I think those 
I, I think that you accept as any other institution a usual traditional transfers. Exactly. At this moment, we don't have like something you come to the our um, uh, web page and you can pay online. You know the details, you can get invoice from us and there is a bank transfer with SWIFT details, IBAN details and so on. This mm -hmm. is the traditional uh, um, schema. <laughs> Thank you. The next one, uh, do you provide any support with the accommodation? This is uh, what we advise for our students like uh, in priority. Uh, but we can also share some other options of dormitories uh, uh, around Poznan. Uh, what you have to remember is that uh, since Poznan is uh, quite a popular uh, student uh, city, uh, it's always better to book the apartment, to book the bed uh, in July in the beginning of August, because later on we can, you know, you can ask us, help us, we can share all our details and then we say, uh, you say that no one responds, yeah, that's why we have Polonus, we have several uh, dormitories that we know that are fine, so we can share uh, the details with you, of course, and we really recommend to, uh, to register students for such a uh, a dormitory uh, as early as it is possible, just to be sure that the person has a place to live and to stay. Mm, thank you. Um, are there any options for the spouse with the main applicant? I think it's about like, for example, if the applicant is a husband, can he take his wife with him? I have understood this question, like uh, if it is any kind of discount, then there is a discount in our program, for example, previous year, the discount that is accepted for this year, yeah, 10% of the year uh, tuition fees for the spouse or for the brother or sister. Uh, so uh, we, it, quite, uh, quite common case because we have siblings like uh, applying for the university. And uh, since one is accepted, the second one gets this kind of 10% discount for, for the course. It is possible. But if you ask if someone is accepted and then we invite the second person, then no. We invite only these people who are accepted to our university. Uh, no, the agent mean uh, the visa process. The visa process? Uh, but uh, on the basis... Um, I mean, um, okay, I got it. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. Did you mean that if the applicant, for for example, is a husband, can his wife automatically apply for visa as he is the husband? Mm, okay, I got it. Sorry. I don't <laughs> sure that this is the case. I will tell you how it was in my experience. I know that, for example, a student who is applying. Um, to study when I was 18 years of age and I applied for my bachelor, I sent it the um, the confirmation that I'm student to my parents, and they were able to do a Schengen visa on the basis of my documents, just to make you know a short trips to meet me. But this is a, Sch a Schengen visa, so this is not a Type D visa for limited access. And I I'm sure that 99% cases in Poland you're not allowed to automatically apply for the visa just that your husband went or your wife went to the studies. Exactly. This is what we also, um, uh, what we are asked year by year by our students. And in those, those cases, uh, students ask us for one extra confirmation of acceptance. And uh, in some cases, they also ask us uh, if they are minors, in those cases it works. So we university confirm that this is our applicant and we invite uh, the uh, legal guardian, uh, the mother of the person to, uh, to, to, to cross the border and to help with uh, accommodation. This is what we wrote in our experience. But yeah, Nick is absolutely correct. I, I didn't hear about such cases when they got visa, like normal visa for a long stay. Mm -hmm, thank you. Um, all right. The next question is how one student can stay in Poland after studying. 
uh, I will just repeat again, Miss Yulia, you can apply for the resident permit for the students after finishing the, the study, so like a graduate permit. Uh, but it also will give you a limited amount of time and, and it will be the decision of the voivodeship for how long to give it to you. Uh, the next one, any scholarships available, uh, as you mentioned, yes, for the good marks, uh, how it was called, a rector scholarship? Yes, a, a rector scholarship. Uh, so, yes, if your student will be studying good, so you will get the treat, as we can say. Uh, and Bismillah, I would have a couple questions from myself. Uh, the thing is that as you mentioned that your management studies, they have a lot of different, I would say, specializations. Like you can be a project manager, et cetera. Uh, so basically, do you have a specialization during your studies that, that you would like to choose? Here, we speak about uh, management, right? Correct. And Correct. The, the students have the core subjects that is general for all of them, and they can uh, choose from the list of the subjects that are uh, appropriate for this or that specialization path. So they create their own program. They choose it from example, some uh, some uh, modules from the uh, creative marketing or from innovative uh, project mar management. Uh, in fact, the dinary contacts the students send in the names of the models and students can be signed for some particular models that they choose from these specializations and path. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. The next one is, do you, what major options do you have for the bachelor? So this is the information technologies and the management. At the moment, two of them. But if, as Ms. Yulia said, there will be a lot of interest, they may add others. Uh, yeah, yeah. We always ask, if, for example, graphic design is a high need for our applicants. We just want to create those programs that we are sure that are very popular for uh, Polish language, uh, Polish uh, language, yes, courses. And uh, we know that they really work very well. And so here you can see from the list and uh, our uh, manager um, uh, always ask me if there is any feedback from the agents so they need some extra or they need some short-term courses or maybe uh, some of the students are interested in MBA because uh, we are thinking about opening this course in English because right now it exists only in Polish but successfully for uh, it's already the third year of our uh, MBA course at Collegium Da Vinci. Mm -hmm. Uh, and can you please tell us how much funds are required to get the visa? Because you said that you can pay by semesters, as I remember, yes? Yes, yes exactly. Uh, so uh, as you see, it's uh, more than one and a half thousand euro yeah, uh, for uh, this course. And here you say uh, you see one, four, four, zero for one semester. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the next one is... Um, Please, uh, please clarify the management course uh, if there is a business management or hotel management specialization. Uh, no, uh, hotel management definitely no. Uh, creative marketing and innovation project management. By the, uh, at the same time, you see that business manager exists in Polish. So if you see that, hmm, it's very needed. So we can think think about even. Uh, uh, opening this uh, course in English as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the last question is, do you send MOU and list of the documents to the agents? Uh, what do you mean by MOU? I think uh, MOU is a memorandum of understanding. It's like, dear agent, please specify, did you mean the agreement? Okay, so let's just change the question by ourselves. <laughs> so, uh, so basically, when you're starting to work with the agent, what kind of information do you usually provide them with? Uh -huh, sorry, medium of instruction. My, my apologies. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so uh, when we start cooperation with agents, we provide them with all information, uh, with marketing details and the information of admission. Once the student is accepted, we send the documents uh, in scans to the um, to the uh, agency because we have permission for, for such a situation, and then we send the documents by post. So this uh, the agency receives the documents uh, that is uh, required for visa in originals by post. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are out of the questions. Miss Yulia, thank you for a great presentation. Uh, your contacts were shared and after the presentation, I will also send you the list of all the agencies who were attending. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much and have a great day.